Is it true that hair loss can be linked to poor diet and micronutrient deficiency, or are the people that tell you this just trying to sell you useless vitamins? Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you the results of a recent study that tries to settle the issue. The researchers literally took a sample of men with baldness and compared their blood work to a matched sample without baldness. Now, the results might shock you, so make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Just before we get into the video on vitamin deficiencies, if you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So guys, a debate that's probably as old as hair loss itself is about the role of nutrition. On the one hand, you have the hardcore DHT camp. For them, everything in hair loss is about DHT, and whoever tells you otherwise is either trying to sell you something or is plain foolish. Never mind the fact that you can nuke your body with antiandrogens to the point of removing 90% plus of DHT levels from your system, and you still won't get back your hair. Or never mind the fact that as DHT levels decline with old age, hair loss only gets worse and worse. Now, on the other hand, you have people like us. So we'll tell you that DHT is certainly involved in hair loss, though the exact mechanism through which it acts hasn't yet been proved. But we'll also tell you that lifestyle factors certainly do play a role with nutrition being one of the most important ones. And a fundamental aspect of good nutrition is adequate micronutrient intake, vitamins and minerals. Now, there are two obvious ways to test the nutrition hypothesis. The first is to see if changes in nutrition affect the course of hair loss. The second way is to do actual blood work on men with androgenetic alopecia and compare the results to an otherwise matched sample of men without androgenetic alopecia. If there are differences between the two groups, this is a good suggestion that nutrition and hair loss are linked. The advantage of the second approach is that it's far easier. Basically, it's a snapshot in time. All you need is to recruit the balding and non-balding men and then simply run the tests. So it's very surprising that up until now, we didn't actually have any studies that attempted to do this until this past summer, when we had the publication of this paper out of Russia. To test the nutritional deficiency hypothesis, the researchers took a group of 50 men with androgenetic alopecia and did their blood work. They then compared it to a matched group of 25 men without androgenetic alopecia. All the men in the two groups were aged 18 to 55 and had a normal BMI. The men in the androgenetic alopecia group had early to moderate hair loss, stages one to four, and they were further subdivided into two groups, one with high and one with low levels of dihydrotestosterone. There were no differences in hair density and diameter between these two subgroups. Meaning that regardless if the balding men had higher or lower levels of DHT, their hair loss was the same on average. So, the researchers looked at the hair density in two scalp regions. One was in the parietal region, which is subject to miniaturization and balding, and the second was in the occipital region in the back of the head. The occipital region is so-called androgen insensitive. So let's look at the comparison between the two groups. In this table, you can see the various vitamins and trace metals in the first column. Dihydrotestosterone is the full name of DHT, ZN is zinc, Cu is copper, Mg is magnesium, Ca is calcium, Fe is iron, and Se is selenium. In the second column, you see the average values for the 25 healthy controls, and in the third for the 50 balding men. Pause the video if you want to study the table more. So, as you can see in the table, the men with androgenetic alopecia were, quote, characterized by multiple deficiency of trace elements, metals, and vitamins in comparison with healthy individuals. The balding men had 21% lower levels of zinc, 42% lower copper, 10% lower magnesium, 30% lower selenium, 15% less vitamin B12, and a whopping 53.3% lower vitamin D. Folic acid was also 53% lower in the hair loss group. Guys, what do you think of all of these differences? And what about the massive vitamin D difference? The men in the androgenetic alopecia group were massively deprived compared to the controls, with an average vitamin D level of only 21, which is borderline deficient. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Now guys, the one parameter where balding men had higher levels was, drumroll, DHT. 
So they had higher DHT levels as you'd expect, 22% more, which was also statistically significant. Now guys, here's a very interesting question to ask. So you found that there are significant differences between bolding and non-bolding men in various micronutrients, zinc, copper, magnesium, selenium, vitamin D, etc. But if you look at the bolding men only now, so take out the non-bolding ones and look at the bolding ones only, do the differences in micronutrient levels correlate to the degree of hair loss? In other words, does hair loss tend to be more severe the lower the levels of these micronutrients? Surprisingly, the answer was no. If you were in the hair loss group, the degree to which you were vitamin deficient did not predict how advanced your hair loss would be, which is not what the researchers, or frankly we ourselves, expected. Now, a major limitation of this study is that it's cross-sectional. In other words, it's a snapshot in time. So for that reason, it's very difficult to say with certainty that micronutrient deficiencies in bolding men are the actual cause of hair loss, or if they're merely the result of some other process that is causing the hair loss. For example, it could be that stress, environmental pollution, or some other environmental factor is affecting these men who are susceptible to boldness. And these other environmental factors are also driving down their micronutrient levels. Now, the evidence actually suggests that there are health issues that might be responsible for the micronutrient deficiency. And they are probably interacting with each other and with hair loss in causal relations that are just too complex for us to understand. For example, we've had other cross-sectional studies that compared bolding to non-bolding men on various parameters like obesity, heart disease, blood pressure, smoking, you name it. And almost all of them find that men with boldness on average are worse off. So they tend to be heavier with higher blood pressure and they have more heart problems. But guys, I can't stress this enough. It's on average. So you can be losing your hair and be on a fantastic diet with phenomenal health, etc. We're talking about averages here. But having said that, the fact that boldness is statistically linked to micronutrient deficiency and various aspects of poor health should raise alarm bells. For years, the research community was obsessed with DHT and was looking at nothing outside of DHT, when we already had ample evidence that there is far more to hair loss than DHT. The authors of this study that we discussed today propose a two-factor model, where you have DHT and genetic predisposition forming one component and micronutrient deficiencies as another component. If you ask us, this is certainly a step in the right direction, though we're probably still just scratching the surface here. At any rate, as more of these studies come out, you can be sure that you'll be the first to know. If you click the videos on the screen now, you can learn more about maximizing dermaroller results as well as Will's eight steps to regrowing his hair. Thanks a lot.